Hi out there in Facebook land. This is Sarah McBoundry from Synergy Behavior Solutions. Welcome. Today's Tuesday, or no, it's Thursday's trainer's tips. Uh, we're actually going to do some cooperative nail trims. So most people find nail trims pretty overwhelming and worrisome, and they're just, they're afraid of cutting their dog's nails too short. They're afraid of quicking them. Uh, their dogs are terrified. There's lots and lots of issues with nail trims, and it's something that we're really passionate about, about working on reducing dog stress on nail trims, and also, I'm grabbing my treats here, um, on having the dogs be cooperative in the process. So I'm gonna demo today with my dog, Lindy. She is a two-year-old Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever, and I have been working with her on cooperative nail trims since she came to me at about nine weeks old. Um, this is always how we do our nail trims. You're actually in one of my bathrooms. Uh, so anybody who trains with me knows I talk a lot about bathroom training, and it actually has nothing to do with going to the bathroom. It has to do with your bathroom is the most boring place in your house. So I do lots and lots of training here. Um, and this is where I always do our nail trims, is in this particular bathroom. So for Lindy, a lot of the, um, the ease of doing nails becomes the power of predictability. And um, I talk a lot about that in a variety of our classes, but once the dogs know what to expect from you and from the situation, it helps reduce their anxiety. So a couple tips of the, of the game first is the nail trimmers that we're gonna be using. Um, so these are the Miller Forge red handled trimmers that we talk about a lot. Um, I recommend these, first of all, they're super sharp. The other th part of it is that they're quiet. So a lot of nail trimmers make a fair bit of noise when you open and close them and these do not. So I don't have to worry about conditioning my dog to the sound of the clippers making a noise in addition to working on desensitizing and counter conditioning my dog just to actually have their nail trim. The other part that we are going to do with our nail trims is we are looking to do little teeny slivers of nails. I have some here that I saved for my last nail trim. Um, you're not looking to cut off big chunks of nails. So I'm gonna try to hold these up. Um, all right, so these are the little teeny slivers. If I tilt it down a little bit. You can see how minute they are. That is what we're looking for. Tiny little bits of nail, not huge chunks of nail. When you start trimming off large pieces of the nail, you get more of a risk of, doing, of hitting the quick, which is what we're always trying to avoid. That's the part that bleeds, um, lots of nerve endings there, and really scares and bothers the dogs if, they, if you hit the quick. Um, you can ruin a amazingly good dog uh, hitting their quick one time, so you want to really be careful with how you're doing these nail trips. All right, so now that we've done some chatting about it, we're going to tilt my screen down here, and we're going to work on the actual nail trim. So uh, Lindy, like I said, this is how Lindy and I trim nails all the time. This is what we call her Zen Bowl. It's a jar, I know, she doesn't know the difference. Um, so the Zen Bowl is, I can leave it here and she does not help herself to treats. So it's gonna stay here, I'll put it so that you guys can see it. <laughs> and she knows that if she does what I'm looking for, the treat will come to her. All right, so as you see, as soon as that Zen Bowl went down and I got in position, she's like, oh, we're doing nails now. Let's go ahead and offer pause. All right, the other thing about these nail trimmers to remember is that the guard goes towards you, not towards the dog. I actually moved the guard out of the way, but there is a right and wrong way to hold these clippers so that if you are holding um, the guard towards the dog, they don't clip as well. So we're going to see about... Little teeny sliver and treat. So she's not used to me talking while I do this behavior. So notice how she pulled her paw away, I let her. She's like, why are you talking and not paying attention to just me doing my nails? So it's really important to watch your dog's behavior and stress levels when you're doing nails. More, the more that they are empowered to be cooperative and be part of the game, the less stress it is for them. I'm going to wait till she's ready to go again. Notice how she's not looking at me at all. She's actually really tense in her paw. So I'm going to actually put that paw down. I'll see if she wants to re-offer it. Awesome, she does. She released the tension in it. 
totally good to clip. All right, she wants to stay on that pause. She will actually rotate pause as she feels comfortable. Good girly. All right. So this is definitely out of her realm of norm, like I said, to be having me talk to the magical person who is not there called the internet. But she's still hanging in there with me. Lots of nice little teeny slivers of crows there. Good. She's able to take that paw away. I'll see if she wants to re-offer. She does. And this time I'm actually going to toss her away, give her a break, and we're going to see if she wants to come back. I need her to come back a little bit closer. Normally if we were doing this by ourselves and not on screen, um, where she stopped and laid down, I would have gone to her to do the trim there. Okay, that time I actually missed the nail, but she still gets a reward because it's what, it's not her fault that I missed the clip. It's my fault. So this is a slow process, as you see. Oh, missed the clip. She said I wasn't super comfortable with that. We're going to wait. Good. I'm going to give her a break again. Ah, she says no problem. Nice job. So she gets pretty excited about these nail trims. I don't give her a lot of breaks because as you see when I'm doing this by myself necessarily, we've built up to not needing the brakes because as you saw, the brakes get her a little excited running around. So, all right, nice little sliver there. Oh, actually really nice. So um, I'm gonna tilt the camera down a little bit more. Um, so she just twisted in a way that I can actually reach her back feet better. So we're going to do that. We're going to do a little trim on her back feet. So she is comfortable doing both. She does not pick up and offer me the back feet like she does the front feet, but she's comfortable with me picking them up. Usually, right there. So that was a really good way for her to say, I'm done with my back feet right now. And I always respect that. Then he has some neurological issues in her back legs, and that was her right rear leg, which is a little bit worse than her left rear. And so we do her back really at her pace. It's really important that we stay at her pace with those back feet trims. All right, we're gonna do one or two more clips here. She doesn't need too much done. I just did them on Sunday. Oh, nice job, miss. So really relaxed, giving me a side lay position, super comfy, choosing to be part of the game. Excellent. Awesome. So one of the things you want to think about too is how you clip. Um, I'm doing a lot of side and top of the nail, not just clipping quick and going. Like I said, that definitely sets you up for problems with catching the clip more. All right, excellent job, Miss. I'm going to give her a chewy, um, see if we have any questions about the nail trims. I remember to bring my, my drool rag this time because my dogs are a little drooly when we train. All right, so I have a chewy prepared for her. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple extra little treats in there. What's really nice about this, because I have been working on this since she was a puppy, she will actually work and do her nail trims just for her kibble. I don't know if you noticed that's what's in her um, Zen bowl today. Um, but we don't have to do anything special for the nail trims because she's so used to it. We've worked really hard. Well, that is a very noisy treat. Um, so we've worked really hard on her being comfortable. So we don't have, I don't have to do a, such a high value of reinforcement. I'm going to bring up another little, um, so here is that sliver of nail again. This is a good example of what we're looking for. Not big chunks, just little teeny bits. Like I said, less likely then to um, worry about hitting the quick. So we are having a, what we call tip top toenail class coming up uh, starting Tuesday. Uh, the 26th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, or, sorry, 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I did the math for you all. Um, and that is a four-week class teaching you how to do cooperative nail trims 
just like I've done with Lindy here. Um, this is not something that happened overnight with Lindy and I. We've worked really hard to get to this point. And I'm very, very proud that she's able to sit here and lay down and relax and do a cooperative nail care with even me being distracted talking to all of you. Um, so it's really a, a big leap. Um, sometimes people are worried about joining our class because they feel that their dog is too far away from being able to trim. And our class is set up completely so that everybody works at their own pace and we do what's best for your dog. So if your dog is more ready to get uh, closer to get to actual nail trims, then we'll help you that way. If your dog, even at the site of clippers, runs away, we start there. Every dog is a little bit different on their level of comfort, and every client is a little bit different with their level of comfort. So we also work a lot in that class to teach you how to be comfortable trimming nails, because many, many people um, aren't super comfortable. Uh, someone just, Diane, just, hi, Diane, great to see you here. You said you need to watch this from the beginning. As soon as this is done, it will load up on Facebook, and you can go ahead and uh, watch it from the beginning, and you can see the whole thing. Um, like I said, hopefully maybe you can join us for our cooperative nail trim class. If you have any questions as people are watching it, feel free to leave comments, and we'll gladly answer those in the questions later. Um, I hope you learned some tips on how to do cooperative nail trims and that it is possible. Many people don't even think that this level of hands-free cooperative nail trims are even possible with their dogs. And trust me, they are. It just takes some work and it's well worth it for the life of their dog, for your dog, for your stress and their stress. So thanks so much for joining us today for our Facebook Tuesday tips. Um, Tuesday, wow, I'm really still stuck on Tuesday. <laughs> it's Thursday, sorry to confuse everybody. I think everybody knows uh, we are, uh, who knows what weekday we're at at this point. Um, so thank you for joining us for Thursday's trainer tips. And we will see you guys next week on Tuesday at noon. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or send us a direct message. Once again, this is Sarah McLaughlin from Synergy Behavior Solutions. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.